Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so shocked to find out that a federal judge dismissed the Duggar sisters lawsuit. Um, and they literally were just days away from a settlement conference where their attorneys would have met with the attorneys of the department and they would have came up with, you know, a settlement amount for them to settle this outside of court and not go to trial if the girls felt that they were offered, you know, a decent amount of money, then they could have got a settlement. And if not, you know, they were going to move forward to go to trial. But none of that is going to happen now because a judge decided that he was going to dismiss the case. And according to what I'm reading, um, it says, case closed, Duggar sister's lawsuit dismissed as they fail to prove the cops caused emotional distress by leaking the molestation report. Now, I just want to say they are victims, despite who their brother is, despite who their parents are, despite how their parents handled this situation. None of that matters. What matters is these girls were victims. They were sexually abused as young children. One of the girls as young as five years old. And they were not allowed to decide when they wanted to talk about this or if they wanted to at all because they were outed. A tabloid decided to get this report and they filed, um, they got this report under the Freedom of Information Act. And from my understanding and from what I'm reading in regards to this lawsuit, the Duggar sisters say that it was re not redacted properly. While their names were redacted, it said Josh Duggar's siblings that he uh, abused his sisters. And it even listed one of the girl's ages. So that right there outed one of the girls. And no matter who you are, um, you should never be outed as a victim. So I'm really shocked and I'm saddened to hear that this judge is it, I mean, I guess legally you have to follow things, you know, by law when you're going through a court system, but it's common sense that if someone is outed as a victim and they have to relive what happened to them so publicly, it is absolutely going to cause emotional distress. That's a given. So I'm going to go through this article right here, then share my thoughts. And I want you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And I know a lot of people you know, because they're Duggars and who their brother is and who their parents are and the fact that their parents did not handle this um, the way maybe we all feel that they should have. A lot of people's like, well, they should have been suing their parents. Well, at the end of the day, they were outed by the tabloid and not their parents. Like, yes, did their parents handle this properly? Absolutely not. Should their parents have handled it a different way? Yeah, sure. Um, but still, at the end of the day, it was the tabloid that outed them and told the whole world that they had been abused and they had been assaulted, uh, sexually assaulted, you know, nonetheless. So they were minors when this happened. They had to relive this after the girls say they had kind of, you know, moved past it. So despite anything else, I absolutely think this caused them emotional distress. And I absolutely think they should have had a case that their case shouldn't have been dismissed. That's just my opinion. So it says here, case closed, Duggar sister's lawsuit dismissed after they failed to prove the cops caused emotional distress by leaking molestation report. So Jessa, Jill, Ginger, Joanna had legally challenged the local authorities over a leaked police report claiming that their brother molested them in their family home. So this lawsuit was filed, um, Jill and Jessa initially filed the lawsuit back in 2017. Joanna and Ginger joined the lawsuit later on. Media outlets are revealing that the judge in the Arkansas federal case against the local authorities dismissed this case with prejudice, with prejudice meaning it cannot be retried again, a decision that does not allow for a party to pursue the matter or retry the case again in another court. It's a final and binding decision by judge. So no matter, from my understanding, um, with prejudice, it's done, it's the decision, it's final, there's nothing else they can do from my understanding. That's what with prejudice means. You know, he could have dismissed it without prejudice and maybe gave them another chance. Just my opinion. So the judge ruled that the local authorities did not intend to inflict emotional distress and that they were even attempting to conceal the alleged victim's identities by redacting the police report before it was released to the media. 
However, the girls, their attorneys said the documents were improperly redacted, making the victims easy to identify. While their names weren't explicitly mentioned, the victims were referred to as Joshua's sisters and the age of one of the victims was listed, making it easy for people to figure out who they were. So they sued Springdale and Washington County officials in, uh, in Arkansas over the release of these records, um, which were handed over to, I think it was in touch back in 2015. And they sued them claiming that it was an invasion of privacy. Um, and that it caused them mental distress, mental anguish, which I, yes, absolutely. I would absolutely think that it would. So just to bring it back a little bit, because I've mentioned a lawsuit in the past and people was like, what, what are you talking about? Who's got a lawsuit? So I'm just going to bring it back just a little bit, kind of go over everything that happened for anyone that is not up to speed. So back in 2015, a 33 page Arkansas police report was released to the public claiming that Jim Bob confessed to local authorities that his eldest son, Josh fondled some of the minor girls in the house while they were asleep in the home. Josh's younger sisters, Jill, who is now 30, well, I think Jessa, uh, they came forward as two of the alleged victims in an interview with Megan Kelly. Um, and on that interview, they insisted that they had forgiven Josh. And, you know, maybe they have. That's not for us to decide if they've forgiven him. And, you know, forgiving him does not mean that they like the person that he is. It does not mean that um, they're okay with what happened. It just means they forgave him. And a lot of people's like, why would they forgive him? That's on them if that's what they feel they needed to do. As long as they won't, as long as they were not forced to forgive him, then I, you know, but there's no doubt. I have no doubt that they're disgusted by what he did. And they're even, you know, disgusted by the actions that Josh, um, Josh's actions when it came to uh, receiving and possessing CP. Hearing everything that they heard during this trial, I'm sure their statements that they put out definitely led me to believe that they're disgusted by that as well. But they said in that interview that they had forgiven Josh. Um, he was never charged. In May 2017, Jill and Jessa sued the city of Springdale, uh, the police department, the police department employees, and other defendants for invasion of privacy and a few more things, claiming that releasing the records caused extreme mental anguish and emotional distress. Uh, Ginger and Joanna, they joined the lawsuit, even though they never came forward as victims. Now, a source close to the family said that Josh's conviction on the CP case uh, could impact the outcome of the sister's case. The source said that they've been allowed to proceed on their case against the police department and a couple of the police officers. They were supposed to go to trial the same week that Josh's trial started. However, it got reset, and I'm assuming it got pushed back due to Josh's trial. But that was interesting to hear that they actually had a trial set for the exact same time of Josh's trial. Could you guys imagine if these girls were going to trial over this in, you know, one part of the courthouse while in another part of the courthouse, their brother is being tried for receiving and possessing CP? I would have to imagine that would be a lot. Um, December 9th, Josh was found guilty on the CP charges. Uh, his trial lasted about two weeks. He was taken into custody immediately after the guilty verdict was given. Um, and it is expected that he will remain in jail until his, in the jail facility. It's like a, not a prison, but just like a, a detention center facility from my understanding until his sentencing, which is supposed to take place in April of this year. Now his trial all wrapped up and the girls, they just really had theirs to focus on. And like I said, they had a settlement conference coming up this Thursday where they were literally going to sit down and try to reach some sort of settlement or decide we're not going to settle and we're going to move forward with this uh, lawsuit and we're going to take it to trial where they would have had a 12 person ju jury, I'm sure. And they would have got to, uh, you know, tell their story of what happened and how it affected them. And, you know, maybe something different would have happened, but they did not get that opportunity because the judge is saying that they did not prove that the police did anything to call them any distress or mental anguish. And the judge actually said that they took 
measures to redact it, even though it wasn't redacted properly. Also, Judge Timothy L. Brooks, the judge over this case, in um, the order where he dismissed this, he said that the defendants are entitled to statutory immunity from being sued. So not only did he say, well, you guys really didn't prove your case, but the police officials, the department, they are entitled to immunity. So basically they're allowed to, you know, do something wrong or improperly redact a report which outs victims of um, some sort of abuse and they are granted immunity, which is a lot of BS in my opinion. Um, now, I did read something that, say, that said the reason this is put in place that um, certain officials are granted immunity, it is uh, in the case of human error, not them purposely releasing information. Now, some would say that it's common sense if you leave the words Josh's sisters and an age in there, that it's not properly redacted. So, it would be common sense versus human error. Um, but still, he basically said they are entitled to immunity and also the girls did not prove that this affected them mentally, emotionally, or caused them any mental anguish, which in my opinion, I think it's BS, you guys. Um, you guys leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. This is with prejudice, so from my understanding, they cannot uh, move forward with this at all. What do you guys think about this? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm going to do a video after this about Jill and uh, Derek's thoughts on uh, the outcome of this lawsuit. So be on the lookout for a video about that coming up. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you guys happy with the outcome? Are you guys kind of like me, a little bothered? Because I just don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. Um, anytime a victim is outed, I, I just, I can't get on board with that. I think every victim should have the opportunity to talk about their story when they're ready. Um, and some people may never be ready. They shouldn't have to relive the situation, um, especially over like tabloid, tabloid. It was a tabloid. It was a tabloid that just wanted a story, you know, that wanted to make money off what happened to these girls. And I think it's just, I don't like it. You guys have your thoughts in the comment section below. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Also give this video a huge thumbs up right now. Go ahead and do it, you guys. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.